Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting time for Rahu. Rahu is in Gandanta. What is Gandanta? Gandanta is the last degree or you could say the last degrees and the initial or the initial degrees, uh, the last degrees of a water sign and the initial degrees of a fire sign. So we know that after water signs, always fire signs come. Like for example, after Cancer, there's always Leo. So after Scorpio, there's Sagittarius. And then after Pisces, there's Aries, right? So now what is happening is Rahu is in Gandanta. Which Gandanta zone? Well, of course, in the Pisces, Aries, Gandanta zone. Because Rahu is in the beginning degrees of hmm, Aries now. And on 30th of October, depending on which uh, mean node or two node you take around, Rahu will enter the sign of Pisces again in Gandanta. Okay, so this Gandanta is going to continue. Okay, so what is this Gandanta zone? First of all, we have to understand Gandanta in uh, Sanskrit, in Vedic terms, is like a knot. Okay, so what is knot? Uh, just think of a knot. You know, why do you need a knot sometimes to tie something, right? <laughs> or why do you. Uh, when you think of a knot, what comes into your mind? You know, yeah, something is opening. Okay, so something is either closing or something is opening. Okay, but in terms of astrology and especially Rahu Ketu, because they are always retrograde, this means past life karma is opening up. Okay, now what does this mean? This means past life karma. What is past life karma? You know, past life karma. So what is karma basically? The law of karma, everybody knows, right? But what what it what is it basically? So, law of karma is very simple. You do some action and then uh, you get some reaction. Okay. But uh, what is past life karma opening up? We, this means uh, for the Western audience uh, who uh, are not very much well aware of uh, karma, it means that some action, uh, some karma that you performed in your previous lifetimes, you are going to either complete that karma now or either uh, leave that completely or uh, you you will uh, as i said you know it's one of the two either you will uh, complete it which means uh, you you achieve the objective or you open it up and you realize oh it was not my cup of cake so now i need to end this okay so this is what it means when i say past life karma is opening up now why do i say past life because it is rahu so if you see uh, the motion of planets, you know, they are direct and they are retrograde. So for example, sun and moon will always be direct. They will never go retrograde. Then Rahu and Ketu, primarily they are always retrograde. Okay. They will never be direct. But the other planets like uh, Jupiter, Sun, Mars, uh, sorry, Jupiter, Mars, then we have Mercury, Venus, Saturn, these five planets can either be direct or retrograde or stationary. Okay, stationary direct, stationary retrograde. But Rahu Ketu nonetheless will always be retrograde. You will never find that Rahu Ketu is going direct. Okay, so why 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 does Rahu Ketu never go direct? Because Rahu Ketu represents our tendencies, our desires from the past previous lifetimes. Okay. <clears throat> like for example if you read the vedic scriptures uh, there is always this description of two things like you know in the bhagavatam there are two things which are very important in regards to sin okay so this is uh, mentioned in different places in the bhagavatam like for example uh, they are known as bija and kuta okay so so what are these basically so one one represents the seeds of uh, past life karma you know the seeds of our sins and the other represents the tendencies okay so for example uh, you you do something wrong you do some immoral activity so the moment you do something immoral what happens there are bhagavatam says there are two things which happen okay one is you will get a reaction for that you will get suffering for that in the future okay but along with that something else also happens which is number two which is you get a your propensity to commit another further sin increases okay so for example we know many people uh, in india you know in the uh, uh, engineering or medical colleges you know during bachelors especially 
people from very good families you know boys from very good sometimes very cultured high, like uh, highly religious families you know also sometimes highly spiritual families highly rich families highly cultured families also start drinking alcohol why because they they go into the association of some uh, seniors who say that okay just you need to try this once you know drinking and smoking then what happens you do it once then they tell you okay do it again okay then do it again do it again so the moment you do something sinful the next time you do it 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 becomes easier which means the guilt reduces so on the one hand the guilt keeps coming down the more you do you know initially when you don't do the guilt is at the peak you feel very guilty no no i should not do then less 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 and then there is one point of time in our life what have when uh, we do something uh, there's no guilt right uh, we are just doing it every day in and out uh, without even realizing that we are doing something which we should not do <clears throat> and on the other hand something goes up what is that our desire to say no uh, the power that we need to say no that goes up you know sorry not the desire but the strength to say no keeps going up and up so initially you do it once okay then you have a it's like a option you have you know to say no it's easier to say no uh, but initially you do it then you do it for 100 times and then for the 101th time oh my god to say no it is uh, impossible it is just not possible it's very 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 difficult okay you need a lot of strong will power to say that okay so now you may be wondering why am i telling all this because that is what rahu ketu uh, represents uh, they represent our sinful uh, uh, propensities also not just our karma okay now when rahu is in gandanta so and by the way why are rahu ketu always retrograde because they are always bringing up they are digging up the crap from our previous lifetimes they are bringing up desires material desires you know sinful proclivities ambitions desire 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 <laughs> from our previous lifetimes so now um, wherever wherever uh, your aries is you know, in your birth chart so something related to that is actually coming up okay so what does this mean this means some very strong desire related to where your aries is that is you know gradually kind of uh, coming because now rahu is in gandanta zone gandanta means to untie something or to tie a new knot okay uh, it is about knot so it is like you are starting something new or you are destroying something that you are supposed to destroy okay so this means there could be many possibilities which could come for example uh, it it could mean that uh, there were some uh, projects that you are working on uh, that could now end or it could mean new projects could start it could mean that you wanted to do something and you did it now or you will do it before 30th of october and then you will succeed in that and it will be like a grand success or you will realize oh yeah yeah this is not what i expected it to be and therefore this is something which i would not prefer to do again okay so this is how you have to understand and it depends on your dashas you know so for example if you are a cancer lagna then aries is in your is in your 10th house right so then what will happen something related to the profession you know maybe you could start or you know something uh, ends and some some deep desire that you had from the past that is something which you are bringing okay so it's it's a very interesting thing because uh, things are either beginning or completing that is where the gandanta zone is because you see aries what is aries aries is new beginnings ashwin is new beginnings okay Uh, the ashwini kumaras okay they are very interesting personalities they are like twins and they are celestial doctors okay so therefore when you have any planet transiting ashwini there is a great opportunity for you to experience healing related to that planet okay so rahu ketu primarily represents our desire so when rahu ketu is entering the ashwini gandanta then this means that you we have a very good opportunity for us 
to actually spiritually elevate our consciousness by reading the Bhagavad Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, or the Torah, the Dharmapada, the Quran, or the Bible, the Guru Granth Sahib, whichever tradition you are inspired by, and see which of our desires will actually do good to us. Because many times we cultivate so many desires which may, uh, uh, may or may not be the best for us, right? So, for example, I always see people in India, if they are earning a job of like um, 8 to 10 lakhs, they will say, oh, when will I get a job of like 30 lakhs? You know, so which is like around 50,000 USD. And if you do translate in TPP, it is like around, yeah, maybe two two 200,000 US dollars, something like that, you know, two, 250,000 US dollars. But the thing is, uh, will you be happy if you just get a job of like, you know, 25 to 30 lakhs in, in the next one or two years? What about the other areas of life? You know, will your family life be good? Uh, will you be able to give time to your spouse and your children, your parents? Or uh, will you be able to maintain your health properly? Will you be able to maintain your mental health properly? Well, if uh, these the answers to these questions are no, maybe uh, you should not hurry in getting that, you know, uh, big fancy job of 25 to 30 lakhs, you know, directly from 8 lakhs. Maybe you should gradually grow to that role, you know. So this is just an example, you know, or sometimes people say, oh, I want to buy this, I want to buy that, you know, but to buy that, they have to take a huge loan, you know, like 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs or 1 crore sometimes, you know. So then what happens when you have home loan or not like you take luxuries and then you have loans or people take big houses, you know, like luxury houses, you know, and then they have a lot of loan. And then what happens is they are always perpetually suffering and miserable because they know if I'm fired from my job tomorrow, uh, my life is going to be in a very serious difficulty. I will be in a very bad predicament. Okay. <clears throat> if this happens. So therefore, Rahu in Ashwini will give us, uh, of course, Rahu has been in Ashwini from very long, but now he's in the Gandanta. It's the final uh, days, you know, like the last 48 days of uh, Ashwini Gandanta. So therefore, please have a look at your desires. Try to try to see if they will actually uh, lead to fulfillment in life, if they are, uh, if, if they will lead to happiness in life, even if they are fulfilled, okay? So therefore, if you feel that uh, there, there are some whimsical desires in your mind which may, may not lead you to happiness, well, then maybe you don't have to work towards it, okay? But if there is something that you strongly believe that this will help make my life better and also the life of other people better, other individuals better, you know, then, uh, well, that's, that's a great thing to do. Then uh, please implement something where Aries is, you know, related to that house, you know, so for example, if Aries is your, uh, Aries is in your second house, sixth house or 10th house, then something related to the profession could come up, you know, so, so like, for example, if Aries is your, uh, in your third house, seventh house, eleventh house, you know, something related to your desires, traveling, enjoyment, uh, socialization, big dreams, all these things could come up, okay, so depending on where Aries is, uh, it will be decided. So therefore, uh, please uh, have a look at your desires. If you feel they are worthy, then please go and implement them. Okay. Because now when the Gandanta has, zone has been activated by Rahu, then or other maybe uh, Rahu is activated <laughs> by being in the Gandanta zone. Either ways you say both Rahu and the Gandanta zone is, are activated. So it is the best time to fulfill your desires to go for it and uh, if you feel that there is something stopping you if you want to become an entrepreneur or a businessman and you feel that you know you should leave your job or you should shift, shift to a part part time job or something like that uh, freelancing then i would suggest you do it provided you have some uh, capital uh, to sustain for the next six months you know to one year because who knows your business might fail then you might have to get back to job right so you know, once you make a calculated assessment of your uh, of your responsibilities and then you can take the necessary risks okay so I would say it's a great time to look at your desires and see if they should be fulfilled. And if you are very confident that this is something which you really believe in, which you should do, then yes, go ahead. Okay. But 
while you go, always remember Lord Krishna's teaching uh, from the Bhagavad Gita because we are talking of Rahu who gives unlimited desires, right? So Lord Krishna says in the Gita that uh, do your work but don't uh, don't be obsessed with the results, okay? So which means uh, do your work in a way uh, that you get good results but once you do your work in the best possible way, do not think too much about the outcome. You know, it's human. You will always think but uh, don't be obsessed, you know, don't like uh, get violent if your desire is not fulfilled, you know, don't blast yourself or blast others, you know, or don't do something wrong, something immoral to uh, actually uh, get things done, okay, if your desires are not fulfilled. So, <laughs> this is something which is very important for us to understand. So, read the Bhagavad Gita, reading of the Vishnu Sastanam every day can be very good during such turbulent times, okay. And then Rahu will enter the Pisces, Gandanta. That is also something very interesting which we will discuss later. But here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Till 30th of October, Rahu's transit in the Gandanta zone of Ashwini Nakshatra in the sign of Aries. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. If you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you liked this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you feel should be aware of this okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him especially when rahu is in ashwini and yes if you want a personalized horoscope reading from me then you can always go to my website down in the description section thank you very much